Mic check, one, two, one, two. Welcome back to another episode of Ballers Only. Ballers Only. Only episode 10. I think so. Okay. Might be 11 still. We'll check after, man. We're, just, we're, so, we're so loose with it. Check with the PR department. <laughs> so, um, what's been happening in, in, in football, man? What's been happening, mate? I know you I know you stay active, you stay, stay having a look. Trent's been dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Man will put in so much badness on Carl Walker's name. Like he was finished. Yeah. Now look. But he's probably, had, he's had, he's, first stress right back. Yeah, he's had a bad season, isn't it? Trent. Well, by his standards, yeah. By his standards, he has, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think there's other right backs that have obviously stepped so up. He, he, Who's your first stress rapper, I think, then? It has to be Carl Walker. Like, I'm never saying that. Like, Reece, Reece James Sensible. Hasn't, pre- hasn't been playing consistently enough and hasn't been playing at the level. This guy, he's not a lion because he sees Reece James every week. Yeah, shout out to, to, so, to Reece. And, you, and you're saying Carl Walker's number one? For his experience. When like, we get to the actual tournament, are you bringing back Posaka or are you bringing back Trent or are you fucking off both of them? I'm sh- I'm shocked Bazaka never got called up, to be fair. He's our best defensive right back. No, he's not. He is. Walker's our best defensive right back. I don't know. He's our best one on one with Bazaka. He's our best one on one defender against a man that's got mad skill. No that's, way. that's his that's his one attribute. Who? B- Bazaka? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, so you're talking about defending overall, but one on one no one can't man. get past Bazaka. Yeah, football's about more than that, bro. I hear that, but his positioning in that is ter- bro, his Cole positioning Cole. that is terrible. Carl Walker's only problem, forget going forward because he's clumsy. His only problem mm. defensively is that he lacks concentration, so he makes dumb errors and sometimes people score goals for him. That's what I was going to say. But he's a better defender than Wan Bissaka. Wan is a one on one champion. That's not the end of football, bruv. That's not it. His positioning, is, his, defensive, his defensiveness as a whole is yeah. not amazing, bro. He's just amazing at stopping Sterling or stopping whoever he's doing. Do you know do, what I mean? I do hear that. So, like, you, when he stops a, a, a renowned winger. Yeah, you're looking at like, like, right, he's got him in his pocket. There we go. Yeah, but his think. game is not. His game's all over the place, bro. I hear you, but I do like Bazaka defensively. I'm not going to say, I've never seen him I wouldn't want to play really make mistakes. <laughs> I wouldn't want to play against him if I'm trying to skill him. Do you know what I'm saying? Who else got, who else got left out? Big names. Mm. Um, I think Madison's injured, um, Greenish is injured, so you can't really count them. Okay, cool. Pickford must be injured, because I know he's dropping in. He loves Pickford. Mm. I'm guessing he's injured. Um, no Sancho. <sighs> Remember they sent the Euro squad, but it's, it's, it's the three Euro squad. Ma- Mason Green were dropped out, innit? I think they replaced him with... Uh, so, so, so are we are we sitting here today? I know, oh, what's, I know, what's his name? Oh, Cadwell, yeah. The Cadwell, guy, okay. The guy from Norwich. No, no, um, no, um, Bamford. Not that I think they should have been, but no Bamford. Um, yeah. Are we suggesting that I know Greenwood's a striker? Yeah. Really, but are we suggesting Greenwood over Sancho because that's what he's done? Not for not for that's me right mental. now. Not for me right now. Dortmund not top of the league. Don't get me wrong. Dortmund not smashing shit. But Greenwood's got a lot of potential, but he hasn't shown enough this season for man to put him above Sancho. For me, disrespect. Now you we're just saying? seeing, we're seeing that Gareth. We all knew that Gareth had lost his mind a long time, but now we're really <laughs> seeing it. He's lost his mind, bro. This team's. Bro, we had a good English manager, bro. Full stop. I can't bro. think. I think I can't think of one. With all due respect here to Reece James, yeah. Mm. Man's had like a half a bad season, Trent. Do you ever think I'm gonna pick Reece James over Trent <laughs> in my national team? <laughs> Like, he is nuts. I think it's hilarious that Trent's got dropped. Don't even mind. Not like Ban Liverpool, innit? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but is he in his right mind, bro? It's mad, isn't it? He's, he's had a mad. He's, Liverpool he's, have had a shit season full stop. It's not like Trent's just been shit. Mm. Their shit's just falling off, innit? Yeah, I hear but you. Man's, taking, man's getting to the Euros, which is a completely different dynamic, everything. So, would you say on the basis of this season's performances that Trent deserves to go over Reese, or you're just going by what you know he's capable of? Yeah, this is a tournament football, innit? Like, man could be shit all season. When it comes to tournament, he could turn up. It's different. But anybody has to take players in there that are in form? On paper it is, of course it is. Yeah. That's the whole point of form. So like, if he's out of form, isn't it a risk to take, take him? Not when you know how certain a man is. It's not a risk. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm Trent's established, bro. I'm not like, arguing with you. I Trent's like Trent. established, it. Because it weren't too long ago that he was probably everyone's number one. So cool. it's like, to go from number one to not even making it, how many right backs did it take? Three. Let me give you an example. So yeah. he's not top three. Let me give you an example, yeah. If Harry Kane had a nightmare season. Oh, he's going. Dude, everything. <laughs> he's he's going to pick Ings. He's on the plate. He'll be on the plate. Ings, <laughs> Antonio, and Wilson, and, Ka- and Kane ain't going. And you're going to say to me, no, but they all, they all backed no, six Kane, in the last six. He's picking Kane regardless. Exactly. ACL. Like, exactly. Bro. Bro. That's the difference. So he's trying to say it's favouritism. I'm not saying it's any kind of ism. 
Yeah, because I'm just saying he's lost his mind. Okay. I said it earlier. Yeah, but why would he? Why do you think Gareth's lost his mind, bro? But why do you think he would pick Kane but not Alexander Arnold? Golden boy, isn't it? So it is. It is favoritism. That's what I'm trying to say. No, with him specifically, yeah, he's not. He's never going to not play. I'm not saying he's not our best striker, by the way, because he's he's the face of England right I'm now. I'm just saying. Let's be honest. Yeah, he's our best striker. I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. But I'm just saying that if you had a shit season, like Trent, mm. remember Spurs ain't really doing much anyway. But like he would never but not get picked, bro, for Rhys James or the equivalent of Rhys James. Do you, <laughs> do you reckon that's more to do with the lack of competition for him? See, like no, I just told you, Antonio Wilson, Ings. They're not like they're, they're not. They're all Kane English Ings. players, bro. Vardy that are trying to get in the England team. Yeah, they're trying Rashford. to get in. But would you put any of them on Kane's ever reaching near Kane's level? Like he's, he hasn't got no. See, like um, you got the Saka. Obviously, you're saying you think he's going to be as good as Trent. I'm saying that he's pushing him, bro. Like last year when you weren't playing. As regularly, he was touted to, to be. Life. He was touted to be like the next yeah, but guy. Yeah, sort of things going forward, isn't it? And, and Reece James a bit better defensively. To give him yeah, credit, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Everyone's better than him defensively. To be fair, he's not a great defender. So, like, for me, that's what you I, I, I do think Reece James has got potential to be better than Trent. Do you know what I mean? But obviously, it all comes down to what you do on the pitch. But my point is, is that I just feel like there's more quality options at right back than there is at up front. You got Vardy after that. You got okay. Vardy. You got Rash. Oh yeah, you have actually rash. You know yeah, you're right. I've had a mere rash. Rash is actually he changes the game still because he's like a quite high level. He's never played Rashford over Kane. Never. Like, Kane's not one. That's a fact. But other than that, man, like what is? It's kind of like business is normal. Her man City are trying to get Grealish. It's papers, papers all. You don't want Grealish? Oh, of course, I take Grealish. You're just trying to be calm about it right now. Yeah, <laughs> Grealish could fit in nice. Not gonna lie. I'm thinking more. Midfield three done front three to be fair though. What in terms of? In terms of if reinforcement. He, if, no, in terms of if he came, where he would play. Okay, say no more. But I don't know. <sighs> okay, so this week again we're gonna throw some live people in the mix. Do you know what I'm saying? So obviously last week we were talking about the VAR, and obviously we think it's mm. corrupt and the referees and stuff like that. So we've got um, we've got Jamal from the London FA. Who's gonna jump on and join us? And we're gonna just talk about the rules, what his opinion is, VAR, um, and we're just gonna get into it from there. Bro. Okay, we've got Jamal from the London FA with us, and we've got Lucky, who's obviously a member of um, a AFC Brixton, but obviously another Arsenal fan as well. Who, who do you support, Jamal? As a member of the Football Association, I can confirm or deny which football club I support. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Okay, so um, on our last episode, we was touching base on just, you know, the controversy surrounding VAR, uh, referees, people in the VAR room. Um, obviously, because you're well versed in that type of area in terms of the rules. What's your opinion on what's actually going on right now with the referees? Is, is there a bias or is it just a, a lack of being able to perform their job to the highest standard? No, no, no. I, I think it's, it's difficult to... to in between the sort of standard and people's expectations. In regards to the standard, a majority of them are at the standard or even above. That's why they're getting sort of Champions League matches, Europa League matches. It's the difference is, is the expectation. It's the expectation and uh, the sort of expectation of perfection where people are saying, how is this ref making that mistake? They're not looking at that and saying, wow, you know, they've refereed 38 matches this season. You know, they've only made sort of seven errors. You know, because you have to make errors. This is how it is. Uh, anyone involved in any sport, this is how it is. But with the referees, there's an expectation of perfection, which is mad. You know, um, I don't think people don't rate Allison anymore because of some errors or De Gea or any of the footballer that makes mistakes. It's more of, oh, they only made two or three mistakes this season. But with refs, refs don't sort of um, get that sort of leniency. But yeah, I, I know it's difficult to understand, but they've definitely hit the standard. The issue is VAR is kind of getting in the way because it's changing the decision-making process and everything. But um, <laughs> from what I understand, a lot of us didn't want VAR in uh, because it would ruin celebrations. It would make the impression of referee's decision a lot a, a much more stricter and uh, it's making the job more difficult in a way. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> we know the refs have a hard job. We all agree the refs have a hard job. None of us would want to do that job. Even Lionel, it's, it's difficult. We get that. That's initially what... VAR was introduced for was to help them out. So when you see a ref make an error, which we all human, we make errors. When they then trot along to the touchline 
they watch it five, ten times. We can all see it five, ten times, what's happened. And then they go back and reaffirm the wrong decision. How do you explain that? Yeah, so the best way to explain that is the main reason why we didn't want VAR in the first place. You know, I think no matter who the referee is, hold on a second. No matter who the referee is, I think people can accept that the decision is incorrect in a sort of single decision, heat of the moment, split second decision. We knew that the general public wouldn't accept a decision that is still incorrect once a referee has had a chance to have a second look. The issue with the second look is it needs to be a clear and obvious mistake. It can't be a, a decision that will be unpopular or even should be changed on a minor technicality. It needs to be a clear and obvious error. I think you have handled the ball on the goal line. I've given a penalty and a red card. I then look at the screen and it's actually hit your chest. You know, they are designed for. It wasn't, oh, you've kind of like, I think the best example would be the Davis and Sanchez challenge on Alex Lacazette. Now people are saying, oh, that isn't a penalty. Now, um, I, I, I agree, I, it, it probably wasn't a penalty. However, in real time, I would give a penalty based on the angle that Michael Oliver, the ref, had with the split second one time look. So then uh, one of the other guys, Paul Tierney, is now looking at the replay and he's like, okay, if I had the, this angle from behind the goal, which a referee would never have in real time, I wouldn't give that penalty. However, what are the facts? Savage and his, uh, Davison Sanchez has made a challenge, fact. He hasn't won the ball, fact. He's made contact like is that fact. You've given it in real time, so therefore you can't overturn that. It's so a you're, big, you're basically it's saying, a big big hard, but, but, sorry to cut you, you're basically saying that um, take the blame off the referees, VAR is the problem. Yeah, I would say so. I, I would definitely think so. That's my personal opinion. Uh, um, that isn't my opinion, but I would say so, yeah. Lucky, I see you shaking your head there. So obviously, I know you're a passionate Arsenal fan, and um, I'm sure you've been on the wrong side of VAR, VAR decisions before. What's your, what's your opinion on the VAR before we get onto the Arsenal form right now? What's your opinion on VAR? Listen, first things first, man. Shout out to uh, to the to the um, what's the guy's name that just spoke just now? Uh, Trapezy. Or, J or Jamal. yeah, no, the uh, um, Jamal. Yeah, I've heard so much about you, man. You're doing great thing with the FA. I'm, 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 I'm the London Cup is buzzing, and I like what you're doing. But um, with regards to VAR, VAR is not the problem. It's the people using the VAR that's the problem. <laughs> because I remember when VAR just, I remember when the was, VAR was just entered, yeah, in the World Cup. It was exciting. It was actually exciting stuff. But the people that are using it, the people that are using it, right? One, they don't. I, I wouldn't say they don't, know, they don't know how to use it. I don't think it's hard to use. I just think some of the referees, especially being an Arsenal fan, some of the ref, some of the dubious decision that's been that that's that's been given against Arsenal is absolutely scandalous. It's scandalous to say the least, man. Mm. Right? Arsenal have been felt to victim of this situation. Is what I say. It's and and some of the punditry, right? They call sign this rubbish. The Lacazette one, they were quick to say that. That's not a penalty. The referee makes the mistake. But yeah, the Harry Kane one, yeah, against uh, against um, against uh, Aston Villa, they were saying yeah, that's that's a that's a penalty. It's so inconsistent, yeah, but yeah. but it's not the machine. The machine can be good. It can sort out certain things. Personally, I say that to say this though. Personally, I don't want it because football. I like the controversy. That's what makes you talk about the game. Yeah. yeah, you t to this day, yeah, to this very day, yeah, we're still talking about the Chelsea and Liverpool match when Gallas cleared the ball off the line. Is it off the line? Is not off the line? That's all part of the excitement. This well, that, VAR that's, that's different, though. That's, that's that's goal line technology. So, yeah, um, but but, but oh, that's what I'm gonna say. It it, it, it it is ruining it a, a little bit, but I do think that the referees in this country they are um inadequate. They don't know what they're doing. And they don't know how to use the actual machine, in my opinion. Yeah, they're terrible. Jamal, let me ask you, let me ask you another question, because you, obviously you're on the not on the side of the refs, but you're you're giving them a leg to stand on, so to speak. 
So let me ask you a question. When footballers, as you says, everybody didn't stop rating um, De Gea, everybody didn't stop rating Alisson when they had a howler. So when these refs have howlers, which they have even more now with VAR, why is it that they're so immune from a press conference? Not even a press conference, just five, five minutes, two minutes with Jeff Strees after the game. Why can they not be held to account? But managers, players, everybody else can. Players are held to account? I'm talking about after the game. They don't have to explain the well, actions. They don't have to explain mistakes. I didn't see an interview from Allison yet. I didn't see an interview from Sanchez after that tackle. <laughs> if you want to go. <laughs> the Roy, the Roy Keane challenge on Alf Inca Harlan, the Steve Gerrard challenge on, on George Borton, some of the worst challenges I've ever seen. I didn't see those people give interviews afterwards, so I don't understand why we're free. <laughs> so footballers don't regularly give post match yes, interviews. Yes, footballers don't yes, regularly yes, give post matches, no? Of course they do. They talk to they talk to Jeff, they talk to Gary Lineker in the studio, they talk to whoever. But the refs never speak to anybody. They get this cloak of secrecy around them, they get shielded out of the game, they're gone after the, the final whistle. Why don't they have to explain their actions, especially when they're wrong? We tried it before. We tried it before. Uh, I think it was sort of 2008, it was a while ago. I was quite young. I know you guys were probably younger. Yeah. And it was, for one, it was, it was very repetitive. And then on top of that, people just didn't respect what they had to say. So I remember it was a pretty big match. I think it was Man United-Liverpool way back now. Uh, Mike Dean was the referee. He then came in and um, and then said, explained his decision why he gave a penalty. People felt that the penalty was soft and pe it, it didn't help. People were like, oh yeah, well, of course he'd say that. He's just trying to stick up for his own decision. You know, it, it, it's we're still a, a little bit of a way. When you say you tried it, how many times did that happen? Because I don't even remember that. Yeah, I know, it's a while back. For, for that season, I think we tried it for about I think it was about a quarter of the season, so a good 10, 10, 12 games. After every Super Sunday match, so the highest profile match of the week, the ref would come in, give a brief interview with Sky Sports, about 30 seconds, and ask a few about key few moments. Why was that a yellow card? Why was that red card? Why was that a penalty? And the first couple of times, it was good, because people just, like you said, because you described it pretty well, people just wanted to see an end of the cloak of secrecy, you know? So, sorry. They wanted to end the cloak of secrecy. Whereas, uh, so people were happy to hear from. So two, three, four weeks was good. After that now, it, it got quite repetitive because not a lot happens in, in a lot of matches for a referee. People remember the, 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 the mistakes and the howlers of the, the controversial matches, but on the average match, a ref doesn't have much to do, especially the Premier League, there's cameras everywhere. The discipline's very high. You know, if, if you, if it's not like referee, like back in the day, lucky you don't remember, when I used to play with him at Power League at Norbury now, Referee that there now. It's different. Every match, you have tackles flying in, you got threats, you got people slamming into the boards. That doesn't happen in Premier League football. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's why he got shut down. That's why nobody got shut down. <laughs> exactly. You know, but but for the most part, you know, referees don't have a lot to do. So they were interviewing referees at a game that finished four-one, two yellow cards, and I'm like, oh, referee, how'd that go? Yeah, pretty straightforward match. Uh, the player is good player discipline, and uh, yeah, that game fell. And it got, got boring or repetitive. Yeah, we now, if you error, to us when we've made a high profile decision or an error, now yeah. obviously we don't want to do that. <laughs> the the controversy surrounding the referees, that Mike Dean's a classic example. He makes it all about himself. The best referees here, yeah, you don't you don't hear from them. You just don't say you don't you don't hear from them. Do you know what do you know what a referee feels like? They feel like police. Right, and you're like you're like police on the street. No matter no matter what, they're gonna back up each other. You can see you can see the referee on the referee on the pitch is making a, a bad error, and the people in the VAR are like, you know what? That's my brethren. I don't want to throw them under the bus. That's what it looks like. Um, obviously, you, you you were wrong, but <laughs> definitely understand why you feel that way. It's very clear to understand because. Uh, life got a lot easier for me once I understood I don't have to agree with you I just need to understand you and I disagree yes, yes. I definitely understand I 100% understand and I will always back my dons you know my referees yeah, you yeah. know but um, you know you can never get anywhere in life I know it's cheesy and it's cliche but you can't get anywhere in life without mistakes now one big uh, anything even at Power League or Goals or Sunday League pick the most basic um, level of football the one 
skill that you don't want a referee to have, the one attribute that you don't want the referee to have is a referee who sees too much. A referee who sees too much is like, oh, man, you know when the game is flowing and the ref says, hey, mate, you don't have any shin pads on. You're like, oh, ref, man, allow me. That's that sort of, that's what VAR encourages because you can go and rewatch anything. And that's when it's like, wait a second, he's offside, really? Offside law was not designed to stop goals from being scored because of your toenails or your shoelace or your armpit, you know? And you get to see too much, you know? Even, even goal line technology, goal line, Goal line technology and VAR, this is my personal opinion, Jamal Hoare's opinion, is a complete waste of money. Complete waste of money. Mm. You know, I might say it's cool, but, you know, the game didn't need it. Manchester City, Liverpool would have won the league last season, no matter what. Mm. When was the last time someone's won a league or been relegated because of a referee decision? That's the whole entire point of 38 matches. Okay, mm. Sheffield will go down because they're the poorest side of the division. Manchester City will win the title because of the best team in the division. The, you know, top four, top six, none of this is being decided on one refereeing decision. So... Okay. No, 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 I, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. There was a game, there was a game um, um, towards the end of the, um, the first lockdown, towards the end of the season, I can't remember one of the lower teams was playing. I think it was Sheffield United, one of them games, where the ball, the... the um, I think was he Aston Villa? I can't remember what team it was. Yeah, the ball so went over the line. Aston Villa, was it? I think. Yeah, the ball, the ball went over the line. Yeah, right. And the referee did the the VAR missed it. The referee completely missed it. Right. No, that was G- I, that was GLT. So the goal line technology missed it. The the technology failed. Okay, so so so, 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 so they missed it. Yeah. And, and what? I, and listen, and that's the difference between a team getting rele- relegated. No, it yeah, didn't make, make a difference. Sheffield United still finished eighth because Sheffield United put out a legal case saying if we miss out on the top four because they were flying high at the time, if we miss out on the top four because of this one of two points, we're going to sue Hawkeye and GLT and all that. And nope, they finished eighth. <laughs> and that's the Villa State. It matters, in, it matters in cup competition. It matters in knockout competition. It, it can, no, no, here's, here's a difference. Here's a difference. It can matter. It could matter. Yes, it could, but it has. So far, it's World Cup. <laughs> I'm giving you examples. <laughs> but, you know that, and that's what geo. That's what goal line technology. That's how goal line technology got in because it's, it's a few high profile incidents. Now I don't know if you remember that England Germany game. Lampard. Germany was so much better than England. Yeah, Lampard. That Frank Lampard's goal Lampard. is very likely to have made little difference. That German team was so far ahead of that English team at that time. Now, yes, you could have said, oh, you know, it would have made it two all. And you know what it's like when you're playing a team that isn't as good as you and they get a corner or they score a goal. It's like, come on! Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if, Lampard, if Lampard goals counted, yes, it could have changed things. Okay. However, it was hey, okay. But that's going against what you said, that it doesn't change <laughs> outcomes. It does no. change outcomes, bro. But, but, but that's why it got, it got brought in. But in reality, since when was the last time, since that Man, C- Man City-Liverpool match, where John Stone, I think it was John Stone, Salah had, had the ball on the goal, like, towards the goal line, and I think John Stone cleared it off the line. Yeah. That's the, the last high-profile incident where goal line technology was even used. I, I, and I think the assistant referee in real time said if there was no GLT, he would have said it was no goal. He was confident it crossed the line. But that was the only incident. Other than that, what, what do you need goal line technology for? VAR was designed for when a, when a referee completely misses an incident. It was designed for the Oxley chamberlain Kieran Gibbs situation at Stamford Bridge where Andre Mariner, the ref, sent off. But how often has that happened? That's even, that's even more rare than the John Stones thing. Exactly my point. It, it, it was yeah, for that. So that the ref don't send off the wrong man? It was meant to, for that. It was meant for like the, the handballs on the goal line where a ref can't see it. It's meant for things that was out of the view of the officials. And you need to understand, because I, I do, with the greatest respect, I do referee analyst work for other countries. Mm-hmm. And every time I watch this, I'm like, listen, we are lucky in this country, okay? Excuse the pun, I understand Lucky is, 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 a, is, a, is a football fan, he's a Premier League fan, and he's, listen, I have no vendetta against refs. I just feel as if he, he would, he, you know, I, I want the standard of refs to be higher. You know, that's what Lucky's saying. You know, he's entitled to his opinion. He's a Premier League consumer, cool. But if you watch referees in other countries, you should be very, very, very happy because one thing about the referees here, they're all very successful people outside of the refereeing world, so they can't be bought. 
we don't have no issues of match fixing in this country. We have no issues of cheating or any sort of point shape. We don't have no issues of that in the Premier League. Other countries can't say that. Let, let, have no, Jamal, Jamal, uh, don't have Jamal, any Jamal, like pressure, handling Jamal, pressure. Right. You know what? You know what, Jamal? I, I'm sorry there. I have to cut you right there. Some of the <laughs> Juve decision against Arsenal, I'm, I'm convinced right. in the next 10 right. years, there's going to be a documentary out Somebody, somebody <laughs> talking in the mic. I, I'm telling you, uh, you're laughing. Is All right, saying, lucky. Someone, uh, 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 answer me this question, this please. Time. Answer me this question because you know, you know the game because you don't rem remember, me, remember me. Maybe because my hair was a lot longer back then. I remember you, so I, wow. I've, I've been, I've been part of your journey in, in regards to understanding the game. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, I have enough evidence about you that you can understand the game right at the basic level, okay. side, level aside, side, grassroots, right? So you understand the game. You can't tell me that your football club is 10th in the Premier League right now because of referees. I would no, no, not, no, not do that for you. Okay, so, okay, so, okay. So then what are you telling me? Because there's no way you're telling me that if we sacked all these referees and hired in the best referees from the planet, so you get to choose. You choose the best 20 officials. You get the guy from Turkey, you get Dirk Kite from... Holland, you get Felix Brick from Germany. Pick your 20 favorite referees. They're refereeing the Premier League now. You can't tell me that Arsenal will now be fourth or third. Okay, okay, okay. Pause no right way. there. No, no, pause right there. Right there, pause. There was a game Arsenal played. I think it was Leicester. <laughs> they played Leicester at home. Yeah. And I think it was Socrates. The guys, no, no, it was Chamberlain. No, yeah, no, it was Chambers. He scored <laughs> a legitimate goal in the uh, uh, across the corner, yeah. It was a legitimate goal, yeah. They disallowed it because the referee felt that Socrates was filing. And when I look at the, the, the okay, replay, yeah, yeah, I remember not, that. Not yeah, I remember that. When yeah, I look yeah. at the replay, I when I look yeah. at when I look at the replay, there was no foul, right? Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. two points, that two points was a difference between yeah. Emery finishing fourth. That was that, at the Emirates against Aston Villa, wasn't it? That? It I, was I, at the Emirates, and that yeah, was yeah, the two, that. that 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 two point difference. Was a difference between Emery losing the, or um, uh, Emery having a torrid time and qualify for the Champions League? That's the referee, that, that, that's a referee decision. You behave yourself. So what about, not, getting, I, I am what what about getting three points from all your big six matches? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, to, to, to okay. resign okay. your stars on long-term contract. Okay, okay. okay. Three hundred and ten thousand pound a week is you're wasting on Mesut Ozil. Don't chat to no, me. No, 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 no. That, that, don't chat to me about those things. No, 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 no. As a referee, as a referee, yeah. As a referee, you're playing handsomely. Right, do your job properly. Do your job properly. Do you know what I think personally? You know, I think you know back in the day was in school, you used to have um student student exchange. You get a French friend to come over here. Let's <laughs> <that's, that's laughs> do that with referees. Let's do that referees. Let's just swap. We have the Italian referee and let the English one go over there. The English are talking. Careful what you wish for. Uh, and I am because it's, here's it's, the thing: fans, fans like you are so passionate. You don't have enough time to go around watching football from other leagues religiously like you watch the, the Premier League. The, 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 what you wish for. And it can get worse. It the, can the, the, get worse. With the great respect my Italian Gs and my Spanish referees out there, do your thing. Oh, yeah. I tell you that, I know what you're, the kind of player you are. You wouldn't appreciate playing with that style of referee. Because don't forget, it's not about quality all the time. It's the style of refereeing. Remember, a lot of these refs who you may not particularly like, if they went and got, went down Dulwich to go and referee uh, AFC Brixton, you would actually appreciate the referee style. You would hate some of the decisions, but a lot of these refs have a play first mentality, meaning they're always looking for the advantage. They're always looking to give the benefit of the doubt. Okay, don't. But you not 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 my team. Not my team. We bucket. No, no, I give you that. I give you that. Just because I'm disagreeing with you doesn't mean everything you're saying is nonsense. No, you're making a lot of great points. Yes, I I agree with with that comment. Yes, that would be his style. But remember. Mike Dean's style doesn't work so much here because he has a he's a continental style of referee. It's very bullish. It's quite confrontational. But the but the kind of countries that you're speaking about, all the refs are like him. So that's what I'm saying. Just be careful what you wish for because don't. Let, the let me just interject. Let me just interject. No? Uh, interject quickly. Yeah, I just want to ask you a question. Yeah, because it seems that obviously you're kind of siding with the referees and you're kind of explained why VAR was brought in. So you've got a good understanding of that. Would you say, from your your point, your perspective, that the VAR has been a success and accomplished what it was brought in to do? 
no, this, there's been some good moments of VAR, what it was designed to do more often. So I'll, get, I'll paint you a picture. If you remember the, I think it was a World Cup qualifier, France v. Ireland, uh, must have been a little while because Henri was still playing. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm holding. He squared it and I think Gallus scored for France and then that knocked out Ireland the World Cup qualifying. France qualified, Ireland had to go home. So VAR was, was that was one of the key incidents where people were like, look, the officials were in the correct position uh, and they, were, they weren't able to see it. Obviously, if they could see it, they would have penalized it. We need VAR, VAR then pull in. Then you look at the, uh, the Burnley Arsenal match at Turf Moor, where I believe the, the, uh, Andre Mariner, the ref felt there was a handball on the goal line, gave a sent off one of the Burnley defenders, gave Arsenal a penalty. We look at the VAR, realize it hit the player's chest, not the arm. We rescind the, the, the red card, disallow the penalty, award a corner kick. That was an excellent advert for VAR, VAR, where the referees made a genuine decision and he was actually incorrect. It wasn't wrong, he was incorrect. And then, you know, but when VAR was put in place, we were expecting that to happen five, six, seven times per week. Mm. And that's happened once or twice a month. And then we're having Premier League consumers like Lucky and millions of others that aren't really trusting the system too much. And you can say, oh, it's not the cameras, it's, it's, it's the actual referees who are using the cameras. It, it doesn't really matter. We aren't used to that in this country. You know, if you take it to America, that, that's how it is in most sports. That's completely fine. If you go to other parts of other countries where tennis is quite big, you know, they're used to that. We aren't used to that here. And that's the main reason. And we can wait and we can adjust. But I don't think it's going to change much. So do you think changes need to be made or you think that this is going to be VAR at its peak? Because Yeah, I think now we're dealing with bureaucracy, we're dealing with politics, we're dealing with red tape. Whoever is in charge of the VAR system, it, it, it can't be cheap. There has to be um, a, a multi-year, multi-million pound contract. You know, so we'd have to wait for that to finish. I personally think it should be scrapped because, you know, ask anyone. Uh, all of you understand the game. And, you know, uh, you speak to a fan, forget the Premier League, speak to an EFL fan or a National League fan, especially one of a, of a team that's struggling. They don't even care sometimes if their team wins. They just want to see their team score a goal because the celebration is what we all look forward to. That is one thing that we all like. It doesn't matter if you're doing the sheer hand in the air, if you're taking your shirt off celebrating. That's one thing that makes us all addicted to this game. And VAR is getting in the way of the most precious part of the game, which is celebrating a goal, you know? And that's why, as a football fan, take off my referee strip. As a football fan, I want it gone. And then as a referee, it's not adding any value to the, to the referee's uh, reputation whatsoever. You know, you, you got people like Lucky coming in, bashing it, giving, not bashing it without intellect. He's intellectually providing decent reasons why he as a fan doesn't like it. But we're putting it in to keep people like him happy. And he's not even happy. So what's the point? You know? Let me, let, 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 wait, first thing first. A lot of my, a lot of my problem with the, with the refereeing and the VAR is half of these, half of these, half of these people, they, they don't, they've never played football. They've never how ever played football. How do you know that? That's a huge assumption. You that... No, 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 you, you can, can tell. You can tell. You can tell. No, no, no. Okay. So, Jamal, so here's, here's the issue. Here's the issue. Jamal, Jamal, <laughs> Jamal. Do you want to say, do you want to say, Jamal? Listen, yeah, the eye test, the eye, the understanding of the game, you can see some of the decision, you can see that some of these guys never played the game. No, no, go downstairs. Go downstairs, please. Not now. I'm, I'm having a battle with this. With, with That's Jamal good Jamal. refereeing right there. See? <laughs> go, 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 go downstairs, please. Go, 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 go downstairs, please. Go downstairs, please. Right. You, the, you could, you, personally, yeah, what I, what, what I would love more is for ex-players to be referees. They tried it. Because they... Tried they it. Because, it because, because, work. because... No, no, no. It don't no, work. No, it hasn't worked. No, no. no. The, the, the problem with that would be biasness. Because if, 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 if Rio Ferdinand is refereeing a game, and my United need a point. Yeah, he could do a madness. You can you can get around that. You can get around. That. Okay, I'll but, say this. But, I'll but, this. But, I'll but, this. But, but wait, 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 wait. But 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 I think half of these half of these referees, right? They've never played a game. You could tell they've never they've never played a game, right? In some some of the decision. And what what's upsetting with me, yeah? I may not have be a season ticket holder, but I paid one twenty a month for my Sky to watch Arsenal. Yeah, and then to watch some of the stuff 
to watch some of the things that, that has been given against Arsenal, it's Arsenal's crap at the moment. Make no mistake about that. Sorry, we waste a lot of points. So, can you repeat that? So, uh, irrespective of irrespective of the uh, of the referee, just saying Arsenal. No, 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 no. Arsenal struggling. <laughs> okay. okay, but guess what? I, I, wait, wait. I don't need. I don't need. I don't need the referee to make things worse. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, he, 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 he's, answer one question. Quick question, okay? Two of the Please. current referees, two of the current ref, Premier League referees, one got released by a Premier League club at 18. Another one got released by a Premier League club at 21. Which two is it? Because you told me you could tell by the refereeing which ones haven't played. So oh. those are two, at least at academy level. Tell me which two is. Do you want us to? Do you do you expect us to believe that these two, whoever they are, don't support a Premier League team? Exactly. Why are we changing the subject? Why are we changing the subject? That was the question. That was the question. I'm just talking about from my perspective <laughs> that it's it's a joke that they actually think want us to believe that none of these referees support a Premier League club. It's like it's it's like Chapel was saying last week. Every time you find out that they're supporting like a non-league team, you want to believe that? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. I don't know who ever said that. Every single Premier League. Premier League. Don't that, bro. Well, anyway, that question's full. I mean, listen. Some of the, some of the, uh, a lot of them do support lower league clubs, but yeah, some, some, some would definitely have to support. Who, who are the two? Right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for. Oh, well, they got released anyway. That's the key part. They didn't make it. That's why they refs. So it don't even matter how no, good. No, they... no, no, no. But Lucky said, Lucky, do you know? Do you have any oh idea God. how good you have to be, bro? A lot of man got released. Yeah, good. <laughs> what to get released? Should I get you, bro? Do you have any idea how good you have to be to be released by a Premier League club at eighteen? That means you didn't get released at twelve. You didn't get released at sixteen. You got a, a two year scholar. You know how good you have to be to be a Premier League reject? There's a long list of people, bro. There's a long list of people. Oh, oh, yeah, but, but not a long list of referees, though. Not a long so list of referees. Uh, I guarantee that. What referee is it? Yeah, let me. Let me <laughs> I told you. You can tell by the referee. <laughs> you told me you can tell by the referee. All right, so no, no, my, no, my, no, no. Michael Oliver, Michael Oliver um, got released by Nuke. Andre Mariner as well. Okay, so he was. He was, by, a, he was by, a by Newcastle. For Leicester, so okay. yeah, so because all of them refs never played. I'm like, well, how do you know? Oh, I can tell by the referee. And I'm like, are you sure? You yeah. think you think let, 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 if you took, if you took random footballers, so whoever you want, Big G or someone from Banstead Rovers or someone from Rising Bullers, you think they would just go into refereeing tomorrow and be good at refereeing? It don't work that way. It's a complete different skill. That's why every footballer isn't a good coach. That's why it don't matter that you got released, bro. That's why it don't matter that you got released at 18 because it's a whole different skill set. No, but uh, but it, it, there's, a, there's a big difference between someone who's who's never played the game because Lucky isn't wrong as well. There are some refs who's never played in a football match with the referee. So the only football they played was at school or kickabouts or little hiring a booking at goals or power league. So Lucky ain't wrong at the same time. But to be an academy reject, you know, I know there's a long list of people. You're not wrong either. However, no, what long list? How many of those academy graduates go into refereeing? It's very, no, very. No, 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 no. Jamal, many. Jamal, Jamal, Jamal. I fully, I agree with you. We well, there's a there's a stats out there for every one Premiership match player you see, a thousand never made it. Yeah. So I, I I I agree. I agree with all that stuff, right? But for me, that alone make me makes me question. Your decision. Let me let me let me come out to come back in. There's a pastor in my church, right? There's a pastor in my church, yeah, right. This pastor, yeah, cannot from little, yeah, he detested the church, the church rules, the church, everything, yeah. So you know what the guy did? He grew up, right, and he decided, you know what, to be a pastor. He become a pastor, yeah. And as a result of it, yeah, right, because of because of his disdain for the church as a child. He's causing all kinds of mayhem inside the church, right? So, and I still have to say this. This guy, Mariner, who got released by a pro team, yeah, he's going to destroy it. He's going to cause problems in, in, in the thingy. What are you doing there? Why? Because, why? because you're passing. <laughs> yeah. I, get, I get your point, but just because you get you're my point. That doesn't mean everyone's going to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Come on. No, listen, listen, listen. I'd say no referee ever wants to make a mistake. 
No referee wants to do anything to affect their reputation. So when they do, it's because that incident was too challenging or they lost concentration for a minute. Same reason. Allison didn't want to give away goals. The hair doesn't want to give away goals. So when it happens, it's just a mistake. It's a, it's a, it's a lack of error. It's a, it's a misjudgment. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lack of concentration. It's the same thing for the rest. Players Listen, let, let, me put, let, me, let me put a disclaimer out there. Okay. Referee is a tough job. It's a tough job, right? I'm, 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 not, I'm not diminishing what they do. They've got a hard job. I wouldn't like to do what they do. But guess what? You chose this life. So do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me no referee referees properly. They're improperly at the Premier League level. You know, all them referees, listen, those referees are in great shape. They're prepared for those matches as well. They referee the large percentage of all those games very well. It's always one or two decisions. It's very rare you see a referee hand, mishandle a match from start to finish. Usually, oh, no, I've seen some shockers. I've seen some shockers, bro. They make an error. They referee well. They make another error, then the game ends. You know, do you know? Listen, do you know what I think, Jamal? Poorly performing throughout the whole ninety minutes. Do you know what I think, Jamal? I think the VAR should be run by ex pros, right? And and let me tell you, let me tell you what I think. If you notice here in in football clubs, yeah, the most successful football team is who? Bayern Munich, Juventus, right? And the reason why these clubs are successful because the club is run by ex-players that used to play for the club. Juventus. When's the last time Juventus won a Champions League? Say that again. When's the last time Juventus won a Champions League? They haven't won the world, but they, but but, but, but they're, 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 they're not in the league. One second, one second, one second. Sec. They haven't won the world, but they're semi-final, final, finalists regularly. Yeah, they've been they've been two finals. Lost to lost to crazy Messi Barcelona, and they lost they lost to um to um to, to Real Madrid. In recent years, got but, but, badly. But, but, but 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 the moral of the story is this year, right? The reason why these clubs are well run because they're run by people that played the sport, people that 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 engraved the sport, and people that understand the club. So the okay, VAR so... situation, yeah. Personally, the VAR situation, the VAR, it should be run by ex-players that run that know the sports. It okay, doesn't so if you, to be... if you got to choose five ex-players. To be VAR, who would you choose? What kind of player are you speaking about? Who, who are you thinking about? Uh, listen, for example, someone like Gary Neville. You want to say someone, someone like not to do my United games. Uh, okay. Not to do my United games. <laughs> okay, so instantly you found you found one problem yeah. already, which is bias. Okay. Who else would you want? Who else would you want? So, would you want an uh, uh, Would you want an uh, ex uh, uh, player who never played in the Premier League? Would you want a foreign player, ex foreign player to come no. in? Yeah, just just someone, somebody that's played the sport at the high le- at the highest level. You know? okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not we're not gonna agree no, on, no, the, no, so, on so the VAR team. Let's just we're let's keep it real. We're not gonna agree. First half and a great comeback in the second half. So. Where do you stand as an Arsenal fan? Are you on the fence about him still, or? I, I listen. Arteta is a, um. I can see what he's doing, but I don't have the patience, man. I'm not a Tottenham fan. Right, I'm used to winning trophies. <laughs> right, right. And and what more than any one one thing is fixed though before Christmas is the fact that the football right is easier is easy on the eye now. Isn't that the same? But I will tell you, I'm not sure about it, man. I'm really not, I'm I'm on the fence. What about but about- one thing I will say one thing I will say, yeah, he speaks well. He's got it, it, at the moment the way I see Arteta is all the gear, no idea. He looks the part, <laughs> he talks well. So he says I'm, the right things, right? But I, I don't see the thing. And, the, and another thing with, with, with Arteta, there seems to be, I feel like he's biased towards certain players. You reckon? Do you know what I mean? Okay, you certain reckon? players, no matter what they do, they're going to play. So I'm on the fence, man. I'm on the fence. On the fence. How about Abamyang? I, I, I remember it was signed the thing, he signed the thing, and it was like, yeah, we got Abamyang. How, how do you rate first, where first, he's, first. What, what he's performing like right now? Because... <laughs> He's not looking like the Aubameyang of last year. I didn't, I didn't agree with the contract. I'm always nervous when a 28 year old is getting a big contract like that, right? But with with Aubameyang, I'm gonna give him to next season because at this year he's going through a lot, personal, personally. Mm. He's gonna say his mum's not well. You can see the guy's not 100. percent You can clearly see see it, and you can see. And sometimes I think to myself, people are different, like me. When I'm going through stuff, football on a Sunday is an outlet, mm-hmm. right? But to some people, 
they have, they have to stay away from football. Am I making sense? Mm. But he can't stay away from football because that's his job. But you can see, you can see clearly that the guy is not 100 percent So I'm gonna give him benefit of that. And not only that, if it wasn't for him, we'd be relegated now. <laughs> what about you, Jamal? I know you don't support a Premier League team. Yeah. So what do you think about Arsenal and Arteta? Are you are you are you impressed with the job he's done when he's come in? Do you agree that if he wasn't there, they would have got relegated? Where do you stand with Arteta? I think your assessment is correct. They blow hot and cold. And it's, it's, down to, it's down to the fans. The fans like lucky. If, you, if you're prepared to be patient, then I think it might be worth it. And if, um, if you're not patient, then you can go the Chelsea route. People don't like the Chelsea route, but Lampard out, Tuchel is in. Look at the impact it's had. Amazing. You know, so... It's it's really down to, to, to the fans like Lucky to, to, to see which direction Arsenal want to go. And I think if you wait for Arteta be, and, and give them that chance, I think they can be successful. Also, a massive opportunity for Arsenal is if they don't qualify for Europe at all. So if they get knocked out of the Europa League, don't qualify, qualify for the Europa League again or the Champions League and just focus next season on just the Premier League and the FA Cup like Leicester did when they won a title, like Chelsea did when they won a title. That might be a massive opportunity. It might be a blessing in disguise for us. I hate you. I hate you. you, don't, you know, I, 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 saying that, though, I don't think Arteta's got the tools. I don't think Arteta's got the tools, man. He's he 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 no idea. So does he have the gear, the gear or does he not have the gear? No, no, no. no. I, I, when I'm saying no idea, when I'm saying his man manager's skill is questionable. Okay. The situation with Saliba, the situation with Saliba really pissed me off. Right? And right now, I'd rather ego than Saliba go. Right, this guy is a fantastic. Really? I'm, I'm deadly serious. Right? He's an ex player. You should be happy. He's an ex player. No, 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 no. No, what, 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 what he done to that guy was bad. Was really bad. And not only that, the guy's in France now and he's doing bits. But yet you persist with um with flipping David Luiz. Get your dirty mop head away from this pitch. Go away. <laughs> you know what I'm say, right? I, I'm no on, on a serious note because I pay for this crap on my screen. Making it personal, man. <laughs> No, it's not. It's it's he's done. He's done right for you. You can't say he's done bad before you, Come especially with the money you paid for him and what you're paying for him. Come on, he has done. Listen, listen. Arteta, Arteta has lost eleven matches. That's honest in the league. Where do you think Arsenal should be? With that squad, we should be fighting for top four. Easily, you Arsenal should be fighting for the title. The title, lucky. The club, no, no, top four, top four, top four. Okay, so where are you, do you think? Because Manchester United are a better side than you are. Manchester City are a better side than you are. Liverpool are a better side than you are. So that's three teams that are definitely better than you. Now the rest, you can argue about, you know, because you do have six or seven clubs fighting for the fourth spot. So cool. I don't think Leicester have a better squad. I don't think Chelsea have a better squad, particularly. Um, Aston Villa definitely don't. So it, on that note, yeah. Uh, you are underachieving, but who, what are you telling me if Guardiola came and managed Arsenal or um, if, if let me, let me tell you one thing yeah. if, Guardiola, if, if, Guardiola came to, if Guardiola came to manage Arsenal or Klopp come to manage Arsenal or Pochettino come to Arsenal, yeah, or even Brendan Rodgers come to Arsenal, yeah, we will, we will be net, we'll be net, we'll be net, we'll be in around that top four. Now, don't get me wrong. Arteta Ar Ar was a much better player than all those guys, by the way. But you're saying that doesn't correlate. You don't think... Arteta's better than who? You don't think... Arteta was a better player than all those managers you just mentioned. So What, what Guardiola? I don't think so, mate. Of course he was. Guardiola play. Of course I'm old enough to see Guardiola. <laughs> yes, I'm not, I'm not think this. Wow. I would much... I would, I, if, I was, if I was Pep, I would trade my playing career for Arteta's. Definitely. That's my opinion. No way, man. No way, well, man. It was definitely better than Punch and Clutch. So. Um, don't, don't get me wrong. All right, right sir. What I do think, though, is this I'm, I'm scared that... You know what I'm scared of? I'm scared that this job might come too early for Arteta. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. We should have, we should have gone for Brendan Rodgers. Yeah? Arteta, go learn your trade. Yeah? Go learn your trade in a, in a lower... In, in some teams. Not in the, not in the Premier League. Yeah, and, and learn your... Cause what's what's going to happen now is, yeah, there's two things, yeah. Arteta will either flop next season and get sacked or do well next season and PSG, Barcelona and them club will start coming in for him. That's what that's what's going to happen. But, I, but as a fan, I don't have the patience. First year, give you a bite. 
Second year, sort your team out. Third year, winning the league or challenging for the league. If you can't do that, away you go. My, my favourite chairman in the league, wow. my favourite chairman, chairman in the league right now, when I look back, the best chairman in the way is Abramovich. The guy's a GOAT. The guy's amazing, right? I don't care if people say, oh, you don't give people time. The trophy count, right? The success that Chelsea have had in my lifetime is painful to watch. Yeah, he don't, he's cutthroat. That's he don't wait around. He don't wait around. Chelsea. One wrong move and Abramovich is going to get rid of you and bring someone else in. That's but, right. But, what but, I will, but, but in that... It, what, but, I will but, 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 is, what I will say about Chelsea is lucky, though. I feel like our recruitment is a lot better. Because you went and got Emery. Like, how many managers do you want to replace before? Because it's not like you're bringing V10. 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 As far as I'm concerned, these fans here, the 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 um the money that these clubs are earned, it doesn't reflect on my on my on my in my bank balance. So I don't care. Right. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> disposable paper. This is what I'm gonna say. Dispo Abramovich. Abramovich is the real world. If you're not performing your job, you're gone. Simple. It's true. No, that's, not the real, that's not the real world. No, I agree. That's, yeah, how, that, that's, how, that's, how, that's how he's got his success. That, that, that's, that's how Roman's got his success, to be honest with you. He's cutthroat in every avenue, but at the same time, I feel like Arsenal... Cutthroat for a reason. He, listen, he quickly moved in, yeah, for, you know what, Lampard, you're a legend and all that, but you know what, you're, you're messing up my, you're messing up the thing. Push him to one side. Bought in two calls, give him 18 months, sort yourself out. The guy is in, is in two cups, yeah, and he's probably going to get top four. Fantastic move. Yeah, I agree with you. Agree. You with can't you. question Obamovich. The guy's a goal. What he's doing there? I hear you, man. I, I think. Too, do you know what though? I, 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 I'm also. I'm also putting down to the recruitment, lucky man, because I feel like Tuchel, he never had a gr he had a great reputation in the managing game, but he wasn't really when he came in. Not everyone was like, okay, he's going to he's going to turn Chelsea around. There was there was frowns. There was eyes. Oh, is he going to be able to? be successful with this team and he's beaten all the odds so you kind of have to take your hat off to the recruitment that they've done because sometimes it's not as easy as just sacking someone and getting someone else in you have to get the right person in so like are you doing your due diligence on your the people that you want to bring in ultimately and you've had Emre that, 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 wait 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 you had Emre and you've got, you've got Arteta what was the basis of getting Arteta just because he was Pep's number two and he's played for Arsenal before no, I, I think the reason why they went for they went for Arteta is an is a, is a, um, upcoming manager, and not only that, they believe that his, his football is going to be progressive, it's going to be entertaining to watch. Under Emery, he was an absolute dire. Mm. It's what I'm to say. It was it was shocking. So I understand the move for Arteta. I, I do I do understand it. Yeah. But as a fan, I, I don't have the patience. I, hear I don't have the patience. And, and right, because, because, because do you know why? Who do you want? Who do you want? You're, you're not gonna get. You can't get. Uh, you can't get Klopp like you said. You can't get Guardiola like you said. Brendan Rodgers is what six, seven places above you. So who do you want that you actually think you can realistically get? What as a manager? Yeah. Well, not like I said before. Arteta, I'm giving him to the end of le to the end of next season. And okay. Then, yeah. After. After that, after that, we're a big club, yeah. We'll get Brendan Rodgers. Steve Bruce is available. Like, who do you want then, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the man there, so who do you want? Listen, I, I, listen I, I'll go for, um, what's his name? Brendan Rodgers. But he's flying high right now. Man, man. Brendan Rodgers is the answer to your problems, really? I, I, you have to understand this year, right? If you can't win trophy, the next best thing is attractive football. That's why, that's why, that's why... Would Rodgers leave for a team that's 10th right now? To you. What? Would Rodgers leave a top fourth place, which is where he is right now, for Arsenal, just off of Big reputation? Man, man. Big man, money talks, boy. Money talks. And not only that, Arsenal got a history. Well, history is a big thing, you know. It don't matter that Leicester's better than you right now. Let me take one thing, yeah. Brixton, Lambeth, and Essie Dons, right? Yeah. Financially... Brixton cannot come, cannot cannot stand toe to toe with Essendon or Lambert financially, but there's one thing Brixton got though: history. Historically, Brixton always gets to a cup final, so we have to use that to allure players to bring players over. So it's the same thing, right? Uh, um, um, Arsenal might be tenth right now, but the history speaks for itself. That's enough and money to get Brendan Rodgers.
I, 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 muscle. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think you could get someone like Brendan Rodgers, but um, that's you don't just get Brendan and you fix it. You need this, then it comes to another investment because like you have to buy players. I don't think you got a good enough squad yeah, to get top four. It's, it's it's quite easy to manage the side to up the table. You no, know, Brendan's doing a fantastic job, but they're not in Europe. They'll they'll, they'll yeah. come to the Champions League the next season. They'll finish ninth because getting in the Champions League whilst you're in the Champions League is a serious skill. That's why Sir Alex and Arsenal and these people are legends because it's very difficult. And if you know playing any any level from non-league upwards and you have those extra games and those games start to pile up, it's so difficult to be at your best on a Saturday when you, you don't have a full training program. You've got a match on a Tuesday. And that's just at non-league. There's, there's not far traveling. Imagine you've got to go Greece or Turkey or somewhere midweek and come back. It ruins your, it disrupts your whole week. You're more prone to injuries. It's, it's, I don't know if Brendan can handle that. It's not going to at Liverpool, but... Ain't that just squad management? No, 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 no. I, I, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. The COVID's been a big factor, a big factor as well. Yeah, It's been ahead. a huge factor. He's not going to say... And we're, start, we're starting to see more towards the end of the season, the, the effect of COVID. But you have to understand this, though. When Brendan Rodgers came to Leicester, they were in dire straits. They weren't, they weren't firing all cylinder. Vardy couldn't get into the team. His man management skill is fantastic. He put his arm around Vardy and he built a team around him, right? And a lot of players that he's got, they are not the most expensive players. He, ha he hasn't gone and spent 40 million pounds on a party or 60 or, or 50 something million pounds on a <laughs> Bamiya. He's not, he, he's not, he hasn't done that. So, so with his budget, what he's done, man, he goes to yeah, the true, 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 guy. True, true. <laughs> And he's 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 created some very standout players for this year. Like Fafana, I think centre back, amazing player. Uh, James Justin, amazing oh, player. Um, Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes, Barnes standout is standout player. Harvey Barnes. I know he's injured. I know he's injured. But that is good. These are, these are, the team's, are, the team's kind of crazy are, still. I can't lie. These are no name players. No name. And this is what I'm saying about Arteta. You got Fafana getting the first team at Leicester, but you're loaning out Saliba, and Saliba's a better player. Politics. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, but you, you don't even know. You don't know the bar. situation of Saliba. You might be dead in training. You never know, but like, no, you, know, no. you never know. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I'm also also treated, but guy, whenever guy, that happens, guy, you just guy, assume guy. someone must be so shit in training. <laughs> bro, don't say that because I've been telling I've been telling V about training, bro. If you're shit in training, no, no, bro, that's, that's, you don't that's, play, bro, and no. you might be a baller, but, but you're shit in training, bro. If you're dead in training, it's like. Arteta, Arteta wants what Lucky wants. Arteta don't want to be in ninth, tenth place. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. Want to be in the Europa League. So if he's not playing a player who's gonna help him achieve his goals, he must be dead in training or a poor attitude, two footing people in training. You just, you just don't know. It's yeah, gotta I, be something. I would, okay. I would lean more to the side of you don't know because Tomori at Chelsea for me. That's a political move. It can't be because he was dead in training. Right. He, was a, right. he was one of our best centre-backs. And then out of nowhere, he right. got, dropped out of the squad. Then he goes on loan to AC Milan. So for me, I feel like sometimes in football, maybe not all the time, there are a bit of politics that dictate squad selection or if someone goes out on loan or not. Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I think I think tomorrow is an exception because if he went on loan to Burnley or something or, or Barnsley or Norwich... Cool. When he went on loan to Milan, I'm like, whoa, wait a second. That's a, that's a massive club to go on loan to. So that's when I knew something felt a bit funny. I don't know if that applies for Saliba. It might, but, you know, and V, you, you should have enough experience directly to understand when someone comes in and, and, and is quite high profile to that level, but it's not really happening in training or the discipline off the field just isn't quite there. So the manager doesn't want to start that player. You know, it's as simple as that. Nothing's got to be going on. 100%. But, 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 but I hear what you're saying, yeah. But then explain to me the consistent error that comes from the likes of um, um, Xhaka. He was disciplined on the pitch, but the guy consistently played 90 minutes. And he's got the cheek to say, the Arsenal fan are against me. No, we're not against you. You're just shit. Simple as that. <laughs> 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 listen, listen. And since he signed here, right? Since he signed here, Arsenal never qualified for the Champions League. Never. You can say that about players, though. You can say that about players. 
Come on, that's just not fair. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, and Jacka is replaced. He was supposed to replace Cazola. Can you can you see the, the disrespect? <laughs> yeah, the guy. Can, the guy can, let me tell you one thing. Yeah, I, listen, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get deep on you. Yeah, right. The mistake that these Arsenal players make on a Sunday, they'll get crucified. Hundred percent. That's a different brand of football. Though. You know that. No, 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 no. I, I personally think a lot of these guys here, a lot of these guys here, they won't survive Sunday football. They won't do it. Yeah. They won't survive Sunday football. And and another thing is what well, when I when I when I look at some of these players, I look at I look at um Inketia, Reese Nelson, Willock. I hope I hope they're not related to none of you guys, right? I hope not, right? <laughs> so when I <laughs> when I look at these guys here, right? Are you not B10, be honest with me here, right? Your football understanding, your, your football understanding, and everybody Lucky, careful what understand. you're about to say, though, because you're making me nervous. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> be, 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 honest <laughs> be, be honest with me, yeah. I'm gonna say I don't care, right? Is Inketia better than Azar? Not, not, not for talent, because there's a lot of things that you have to take into account, like in terms of wait, 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 wait. in terms of like athleticism and the training and da 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 he's a he's an athlete he's a professional athlete but in terms of ability i put Azar up there with the best in terms of the, like give, let, god let, given let talent you, let me tell you one thing here right let me tell you one thing here if i had half of uh, uh, Azar's talent i'm kicking every door down you're going to notice me the problem the problem with someone like Azar, i don't want to change the subject here the problem with someone like Azar, the guy didn't realize his talent till late because that guy, imagine him, imagine that, that kid on a perfect surface, yeah. training two, three times a week, and all he has to do is think about football, no build or nothing. Unreal. It's better than all those guys. Unreal. No, that, that's a good point because it's like as, a, as an academy player coming up, you have to peak at like between 17 and 20. If you don't peak in that age, your career is basically done. So I'm not too sure you, guys, you know, know, but if, if that well, person peaks at 24, 25, they might be sick at Sunday League, they might be sick at London League, but they'll never have that elite career that the talent probably deserves. Do you know, you know, you know, you know, Azza, let me tell you this guy. The reason why I love this guy, the reason why I don't want, I don't want to do the subject yet. Did you know that that boy, yeah, he stopped playing football from 16 and he didn't come back till he was about 21? Wow. Yeah. Those are, those are fundamental years that he stopped. Yeah. And even then, I think he's been a lot of the premiership players I'm watching before my very eyes. Do you, know it, a pile of shit. do you know what it is as well, Lucky? Like the, the, the era that we're coming from, it weren't like it is today, and it like the, the opportunities were a bit more scarce. Like it you was re you was relying on a bit of luck, to be honest. Like it, it's not like you could go and play Sunday. There was an enough there wasn't enough attention on things like Sunday League or Saturday League because it was more so who you knew to get your get yourself a chance. And now, because of like social media and da 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 and like diamonds like Jamie Jamie Vardy. We're in a position where people are looking at non-league for, for diamonds, but they they miss loads. And as is probably one of those that have been missed, unfortunately. But in terms of it, it's a travesty, man. Because because when I, when I look at Arsenal and I look at the the, 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 the uh, some of the players that's coming, Arsenal used to produce good ones, yeah. But when I look at Reese Nelson, when I look at Inketia, when I look at Willock, right? When I look at um um, um Xhaka, yeah, and at Bellerin, and I think, are you serious? Mm. Are you are you are you seriously right now? Mm. Come on, man! And these guys play in perfect condition, week in week out, yeah, and perfect condition throughout the week. Lucky, all I'm hearing is, is is you're justifying why your team is ninth. That's all I'm saying. Because the way you're saying, <laughs> you're saying it's on the league, man, are better than your, better than, your, better than your Arsenal players. So basically, it's <laughs> it's my lads, lads, we're gonna wrap it up here, man. But thanks for calling in, bro. I'm gonna edit this up and throw it up. We've had some good debates, man. Um, it's good to catch up with you, Jamal. Good to catch up with you, Lucky. Football's coming back soon, so I'll probably catch you locally sometime soon. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I'm gonna start hey, Jamal, where can you know me from? Powerly, Powerly Norbury. You know, you remember me. It's cool. My hair was bare long back then, so it's fine. I allow you. <laughs> oh my! By the way, we put in the same team as well. We put in the same team as well, you know. <laughs> I, I, what you're doing with the, with the London FA? I'm very pr proud. Awesome. Uh, hey, you listen. Nah, well, I just finished the meeting today, boy. You're about to blow you guys out. I'm about to blow. I'm listen, about to man. Blow I, I, I and, you. And, and and lucky, you'll be involved in this. V, uh, you and Ryan yourself will be very closely involved in this as well. So hold tight. No problem. It's man. coming. I, I, before you go, do you know do you know what what I would love Jamal? 
if you can do, because you, you're in a powerful position. Imagine Summer League coming back to Pinners. Patience. They won't be at Pinners, but patience. Oh, my. With Almost all there. the cameras and all the... Nah, yeah, yeah, but, but we, we, oh can't, we, we can't bring back the old Summer League or that gang, that gang no, thing. No, 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 because <laughs> games and cameras is a bad, that's a bad combination. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't, you can't, we're gone, yeah? All right, later, see you later. Later. Love, love, later, love. Later. Later.